Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to this bonus edition of our Nobel Women read-along. In case you are new, uh, I hosted a read-along started, which started last year in September and we read one book by a female winner of the Nobel Prize in Literature each month. And because Olga Tokarczuk was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature for 2018, she was awarded that this year, um, I uh, said we, we do a bonus read, so we re read one work of Olga Tokarczuk um, as, a, yeah, as a bonus. And I chose Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Uh, the book was uh, translated into English by Antonia Lloyd-Jones. It was published in 2019 and originally published in Polish uh, in 2009. Before we go into the details of the book, which I really, really like, I have to say, um, some preliminary remarks. Um, the, book the book's title, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, is a line from a poem by William Blake. He was an English uh, poet, late 18th, early 19th century, and the poem uh, that the line is, is from is called Proverbs of Hell, and he published that a, a poem in a collection called Marriage of Heaven and Hell at the end of the 18th century. Um, um, hence the spelling of plow in the title P-L-O-W, which is an old-fashioned spelling. Um, another thing is the, uh, the way the book is written, and I don't mean the writing style of Olga Tukarczuk, but throughout the book you will see that there are uh, always certain words uh, starting with a capitalized letter. Um, and that is also a reference to William Blake because he does that in his poems. And William Blake's poetry plays an important role in the book. And oh, one final remark, if you are new uh, to this uh, read-along Noble Women, uh, you will find the schedule if you're interested what books we read. Uh, down below and also a link to the Goodreads group. Okay, enough of the preliminaries. The book. Uh, the book is set uh, in present-day Poland, by which I mean 2007-ish um, something, because the book was published in 2009, in a very remote village in Poland, just across uh, from the border with the Czech Republic. Um, and it's written from uh, the point of view of uh, the main character, Janina, who is an elderly woman living by herself um, in a hamlet in the outskirts of that village. And the hamlet is called Luftzug, which means um, a breath of air. Um, she lives there all by herself, and the book opens when one of her very few neighbors uh, uh, wakes her up in the middle of the night uh, because another neighbor um, um, has been found dead. Uh, and then the plot develops from there, from this accidental death of the neighbor. We learn that he choked on a, a deer bone because several other people turn up dead. And it is clear that they have been murdered. So no accident, they have been murdered. So it's a, on the surface, it's a murder mystery. And Janina is, uh, presents a, uh, us with certain theories that she has. She's quite an unreliable narrator, I have to say, um, why these people were killed and how they were killed. Because they were all hunters and Janina is what you would in modern terms call an animal rights activist. She uh, abhors um, people killing um, other uh, uh, animals um, and she doesn't eat meat. So th she uh, tells the police that she believes that uh, the animals took revenge on those hunters and killed them. The book is a bit of a riff in a way on, um, you know, your typical oddball um, detective like Miss Marple, um, because she is it, it, it seems as if she is trying to solve these murders, uh, but in a very odd way, because she believes, at least that's what she tells the belief that the police, that the animals killed them. And uh, that's not the only quirk that Janina, our main character, has. 
uh, we learn early on that she is uh, into um, astrology. She does horoscopes and she keeps them in a book. Um, she is um, certain that the, the constellation of the stars determine life, uh, that she knows when she will die because of the constellation uh, during her birth. Uh, and she um, also doesn't like uh, real names. She hates her own name, uh, but she also never calls any of the neighbors or the people she meets uh, in the course of the book by their real name, but she always invents a nickname that she thinks is fitting. For instance, the neighbor who calls her at the beginning of the book, wakes her, she calls him Artball. And the neighbor who uh, choked on the deer bone is called Bigfoot. Uh, a friend of uh, Janina's in the village who runs a store is called Good News. So that's a theme in the book. Um, Janina is an odd character and she also has odd ailments which are never really explained uh, in the course of the book. Um, she is quite severely ill at times. Uh, not only does she have to go to the doctor but she is even hospitalized for quite some time, for a week and uh, she can't uh, go out for another month. Uh, she has strange blisters uh, on her skin. Uh, she also bruises very easily. But it's never really explained what is wrong with her. Um, as I said in the beginning, I really enjoyed this book. Um, I enjoyed the riff on the Miss Marple theme, first of all. Um, I thought the, the astrology theme really fit in nicely with Janina's character, who in a way is trying to make sense of the chaos around her and astrology is her way of making sense but it's also a way of um, enhancing her belief that everything in the world, the human beings and the non-human animals are connected. Um, I in I thought the, the, the theme of the animal animals rights, the, the moral question um, that is a, sort of a red thread throughout the book. Why is it okay for us human animals to kill non-human animals, but it's not okay, obviously, to kill other humans. So th that, that is a theme and um, the, the, the plot also drives on the disappearance of uh, Janina's two dogs whom she calls my little girls throughout the book and at the end we will learn that the disappearance of the dogs um, is the, the connecting factor um, with the plot. Um, I can understand that um, when I look at the Goodreads comments that people uh, couldn't really get a grip on the book. It has sometimes an almost fairy tale quality to it. Um, for instance, like Janina's weird ailments uh, that she doesn't, when the sun, it has something to do with her, her skin blistering in the sun, which sort of made me think of vampires. She always ha she also has these odd dreams where she encounters her mother and grandmother in the boiler room. So it's, 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 it's this fairy tale quality that uh, really determines the atmosphere of the book. Um, and the atmosphere is uh, of desolation. Uh, the book opens in winter where there's almost nobody living in that um, outskirt in the hamlet where Janina lives. The, uh, the description of the natural world is really very vivid. Um, Janina has this this connection to the natural world and to animals, less so to humans, obviously. And those are all aspects that I personally really enjoyed. And the book uh, made me think a lot, not only about the plot. Um, uh, I'm not going to spoil the ending, but I have my doubts whether what is dis discussed in the end or what is shown in the end, whether that's really true or whether it's uh, just another 
you know, twist um, in the tale that an unreliable narrator, Janina, tells us. Uh, but it's also the, you know, this, this atmosphere of um, anger towards a certain human behavior, in this case, the, the killing of animals for sports or for food. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I really, I was really gripped by the atmosphere and especially also by Janina's personality. I really liked uh, her humor. She's quite snarky uh, when she discusses men or her ailments or, you know, uh, the, the body is like a luggage that is, um, you know, you have to carry around. And in the beginning, the opening that she says that she has reached a certain age and state that she always has to make sure that she washes her feet before she goes to bed because she never, you never know whether you will be brought to the hospital. Um, so she, she is quite witty. She's an intelligent woman, uh, odd, yes, but also very funny and witty and perceptive. Um, so yeah, I, I took to her. Um, I, I, and I think that that was the, the main reason or one of the main reasons that I really enjoyed reading her story. Anyway, this is my take on our bonus read, uh, Olga Tukarshuk's novel, Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead. Uh, if you read along, uh, please let me know what you thought of the book. Um, I'm especially interested in what you made of the ending, but if you comment on the ending, please make sure that you um, um, give a spoiler alert. And if you have any other comments on the book, uh, of course, I'm, I'm also interested. And for those of you who read along partly or the whole thing of the Nobel Women, thank you very much. I really, really enjoyed reading these 12 fantastic books with you. Um, thank you very much for watching today. I hope you've enjoyed this last video in the series and I'll see you all soon in the next one. Bye-bye.